Welcome, welcome lovely people to this free tutorial we are putting out. Um, I wanted to cover with you the basics of working with soft pencil and I'm using our pencil starter kit just so I can explain to you how to use the starter kit. No point in sort of sending it your way without giving you some tips on how to work with it. So I've got some A3 cartridge paper, this is 220 GSM. It's really nice and smooth but it's got a bit of a tooth to it as well and I'll explain why that's important in just a moment. I've also got a kneadable eraser and a regular sort of pointy eraser and we're going to be using those as drawing tools during this tutorial in the same way as we might use a pencil. So that's quite exciting if you've not explored much the possibility of sort of leading with the light uh, which is what we'll do with these two. And then we have got a 2B, a 3B, a 5B and an 8B pencil here. The B grades just refer to the softness of the pencil. The lower the number, the less soft the pencil is. So you'd start with a 2B. And then as the numbers get higher, the pencils get softer, simply meaning that, you know, when you sort of rub your pencil on the page, it will drop more graphite and it will blend a lot easier. So here's a 2B and I recommend you getting all the pencils out to begin with on your paper and just playing with them, having a try, seeing what sort of marks you can make. Have a go at sort of pressing the pencil on its end and changing your pressure so you can find out how dark you'll be able to go. But also be aware that when you're working with sort of soft pencil studies, and these are all soft pencils in our starter kit, um, you want to be able to create soft areas of tone and in order to do that you need to change the position of the pencil in your hand. So instead of having it on the end like this where it is creating some quite definite lines, try switching your pencil hold to on the side like this. My little pinky sort of helps me control it. And then you're just going to very gently rub the pencil onto the surface of the paper and the tooth of the paper will pick up some texture or sort of It'll land in some areas and not in others because the pa paper is textured and that's good because you're getting light coming through as well, okay? Um, so play around with all the different pencils and make yourself a sort of chart so you can sort of say 2B here, 3B here and play around with that pressure so you understand how light or how, how dark you can go with the pencil before you start working with any other of the tools. And then the next thing you want to have a play with is this. It's called a tortillon. I've used this one already, but um, normally they're kind of white. It's just a rolled up piece of paper. And what it does is it very, very softly and gently blends your pencil work. So do you remember at school we used to try and blend with our fingers? Those days are gone, my friend. Use this instead. It's a fantastic tool for blending soft pencil. And you can have a play with it once you've put all these tones down. So if I just take it on its side and I rub very gently at that um, graphite that I put down, can you see how it's sort of filling the gaps? So where the tooth of the paper has created some light areas, we're now sort of pushing and blending the pencil into the tooth of the paper. It means you don't have any remnants left on the surface of the paper, you don't get any dust, but it also allows you to establish a much softer tone, which is what we're after from this little micro tutorial. So not only can you soften and blend areas like so, you can also lift the graphite and you can use it to draw with or to create much more subtle areas of tone. So whatever is left um, in the remnants of the graphite, you can actually draw with that. So create some little dots to begin with and leave some gaps in between and you will start to see some texture developing there, which is what we are after with these blenders, okay? So that is your... Um, tortillon, which is just another word for a paper blender. It's a rolled up piece of paper, in fact, in French. And I just want to talk to you a little bit about these other two tools which I were mentioned at the beginning of the tutorial. So we're just talking about the kneadable eraser and we're talking about um, this sort of more sculpted. It's just a very simple eraser, but it's the line, the sharp edge that we're after here so that we can use it as a drawing tool. Now, in order to fully demonstrate these, what I need to do is I need to lay a ground. If you've never laid a ground before, you are in for a treat as well. All you need is some paper towel or tissue and a pair of scissors, and then you can choose from any of your pencils here. So I'm gonna go quite heavy this time. I'm gonna go for an 8B. And all I'm going to do is with my um, scissors, I'm just going to sort of shave a little bit of the graphite 
from the pencil onto the page. So it becomes like a graphite powder. You can buy graphite powder, but this is way more fun. So yeah, I think you will really enjoy this. So we're just putting a ground down or laying a ground. Essentially, we're putting tone on the paper first, and then we're gonna lighten up using the erasers. So it's a completely different way of drawing, but it is very, very satisfying. And some brains may find this um, approach actually a lot more effective than drawing an outline and sort of coloring it in with tone. So then you just grab your paper towel and you are very, very gently blending that graphite together on the surface of the page, okay? So what you end up with is like a nice fog on the page. Don't press too hard because you don't want to push it too heavily into the tooth of the paper. Keep it nice and light. And if you have a sort of circular motion, you're creating like a little cloud, really. A little cloud of graphite on the surface of the paper. And from here, I can start to demonstrate to you the value of having these different types of erasers. I'm not going to crack into that one because I've got another one here, but I have got my sort of pointy eraser uh, here, and then here's my kneadable one. And you don't need to use the whole of these. Um, in fact, it's quite nice to preserve a fair amount. So pull a piece off and work with that. Um, they do get a bit dirty after a while, and they look a bit uh, like old bits of blue tack, <laughs> so you won't want to be able, you won't want to keep them forever. So let's start with this guy, shall we? Say, for example, you've got something really sharp in your study. Say it's a window pane or something like that you're trying to work with. Take your eraser on its side, and I'm just going to use it to lift out the sharp lines of the window pane. So, one, two. Three, four, blow just to get rid of the excess. And you can start to see my sort of window pane shape emerging from that. And then what we'll do from there is we will strengthen and we'll sort of shape the highlight a little bit. So if I could then go back to my pencil, uh, I can sort of use it to accentuate the tone between those window panes. I'm trying to do it without blocking the light too much so you can see what I'm doing. I'm working really lightly with the end of the pencil here just because I want to keep a nice sharp line. And then around the edges of that window pane again, I can sculpt and shape that highlight. The kinds of things that I was not aware of at school and I really wish I had been. So this is the kind of tricks that I share over at Surrey Art School. These little technical approaches, which once we know them, they sort of demystify the process of drawing for us um, and make it more accessible to us. So these little tips and tricks picked up along the way in my art teaching career, it's such a pleasure to share them with you. So there we go, I've got my window pane sort of slightly better established. Obviously that looks a bit off, doesn't it? Because that's very heavy and then my ground behind is quite light. So then we go back to the tortillon and we blend again. We blend towards the darker areas, we can soften off some of that tone that we have put down, but we can also blend it together so we get a much sharper line. And it is a bit of a, of a push and a pull when it comes to pencil work. You know, you put some down, have a look, and if you need to, you can come in and tidy up again. So I'd tidy up this bit because I've dropped a bit too much tone there. It's quite a soft pencil, this 8B, so it's great because you can put it down quite heavily, but you can also lift it off nice and easy, easily as well. So what I really want you to gain from that is that understanding that you don't always have to work dark into a light surface. You can start with a darker surface and you can sort of lighten up to create some of those trickier shapes and you can reshape those shapes like the reflection in an eye little window pane uh, so that uh, you're not sort of having to work really delicately with either the pencil or the eraser you're sort of working between the two so you can see I can create some quite sharp shapes with that I can also create quite sharp lines and I'll come back to that in the later part of this tutorial to show you how to use that on some leaf veins but it's just nice to know that you can create these clean highlights I think through your drawings and then just to show you a little bit on the kneadable eraser, I mean, this is a fab tool. Say, for example, I want to reshape a little area of um, my ground. I can shape the ground 
just using that kneadable eraser on its side to create whatever shape I want to really. Um, I can also use it to sort of heal or mend or lighten up some areas where I might have gone a little bit too heavy and it doesn't interrupt the surface of the paper but you can also use it for surface and texture so imagine you've got like a really textured piece of wood for example if you just sort of you know shape it into a little ball and you sort of press and twist you can create some really lovely little highlights so imagine I'm doing say like a little cloud here uh, I can create much more soft organic shapes with this kneadable eraser. So again, it's a highlighting tool. You can use it to soften off or add texture to your pencil studies. And I'll show you how to work in that with a little bit more detail in the second part of this tutorial. Essentially, what I want you to get from this is that you need a range of pencils in order to create a range of tones to create a more realistic uh, study. But you also need a range of rubbers. Rubbers can be drawing tools as much um, as much as your pencil because you need to be able to lift out some areas and make them lighter so you need a lightening tool um, and then the blender is always going to be useful to you be really careful with it use it on its side if you use it on its end it will simply just sort of squish together but it's a really fabulous tool for creating subtle tones without the need of getting like a finger out or even getting any materials onto your hands not that i'm averse to that it's just a lovely little blending tool and a drawing tool in its own right. So have a bit of fun and experiment with that. And I'll be back in just a second just to show you some applications of some of these techniques in real life. So we'll look at an eye and we will look at a um, little leaf as well, which will carve away the highlights from so that we can, I can show you how to create really subtle little veins. So I'll be back with that in just a tick. Okay, so in the second part of this little tutorial, I thought I'd just show you how you can apply um, some, you know, some of the techniques that I showed you in the first one to an actual study of something. So first of all, I'm going to show you how to do a little eye, um, just using 3B pencil and the tortillon, nothing else, okay? So we're going to start just with putting in the pupil of the eye. So really, really lightly. Just that little circle of the pupil. That's all you need for now. Just the circle of the pupil. Pop that in using a soft pencil of your choice. And then from there, we're going to blend. So we're going to blend it off. What that does is it pushes the graphite into the tooth of the paper. And uh, you'll end up with a clearer idea of your final tone. So you'll know if you need to add any more once you've blended. So I'm quite happy with that pupil. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift using the um, tortillon, lift some of that graphite off the surface and use it to start to build up some of the textures that you'd see in the iris of the eye. So just popping those out. I'm not going to go too high at the top because I know I need to put my eyelid in and I don't want a sort of a face or an eye that looks shocked, which it can sometimes look a little bit shocked if you don't put the eyelid in. So before I do anything else on that, I'm just going to carve in very loosely the shape of the eyelid. It tends to cut off the top of um, the pupil. And yes, uh, one of the common mistakes in sketching uh, eyes is to forget to sort of cut off the shape of the iris a little bit. So that's more of a realistic sort of, if slightly squinty eye shape. Um, and I've popped in a little tear duct there. Don't forget your tear duct, it is an important part of the eye. And then the lids, eyelids will sort of come out from there. So depending on the shape of the eye that you're drawing. And don't forget, if there's a top lid, there's always a bottom one. It may not be as apparent, it's a little bit thinner, but it is there and it must be acknowledged in order to create a realistic eye shape. So now I've put my top and my bottom lid in, I can start to outline the pupil a little bit, just working really lightly with my pencil here because this cartridge paper is quite sensitive to marks and I don't want to carve into the paper, I just want to sketch very lightly that outline of the pupil. So pop that in and then I can go back to my little blender soften off that edge a bit towards the center of that pupil that I've just created. 
And then any leftover bits of tones or graphite on the end of uh, the blender can just be used to sort of fill out this area here. I know it's the white of the eye, but it doesn't tend to be that white, guys. There's often little shifts in tone even in the white of the eye. And I can also soften, blend off, add some tone to the top lid at the same time. Some very subtle shadow work going on here. And I can blend off as well my tear duct so it's not quite so strong. So I'll do all that blending now. Just softening, blending off. Almost, We're basically using the blender to draw rather than the pencil. We're just using the pencil to pop in, or to accentuate tone and highlights. So strengthen the edge of the pupil again, strengthen the tone on the top lid just as the lid meets the eye so that that's a little bit stronger. And any other creases, you know, use the end of your pencil for those as well. We often have an extra crease in the eyelid. Depends sort of how your eyes are set. Some people have quite deep set eyes with quite heavy lids. Some people have much lighter, thinner lids. And then finishing touches would just be to go through and add some stronger marks that are a bit more apparent in between some of those little highlights that you've created. And again, I can probably strengthen a little bit areas of the pupil itself. I'll leave some areas a little bit lighter just to show the reflection of light. So this is where the magic starts to happen. Things start to pop, okay? Um, and then lastly, I'll just show you eyelashes because that is a common sort of um, area that people struggle with. So your lashes are going to come on the bottom from the inside of the lid and curve down. We quite often see with um, you know young children when they draw, they do the lashes straight. And that's a mistake because the lashes do curve off. So starting from the middle, I'm going to sort of curve down on that lower lid. And then on this upper lid, tend to not have eyelashes right in the corner where the tear duct is. They start like a kind of couple of mils after that. So again, we're just curving up from that point. Try not to be too exaggerated with your eyelashes. We don't want to all be looking like we're wearing false eyelashes. Try and keep them as realistic as possible. So the longer they get, the, the more sort of surreal, I suppose, they become. Uh, so that's it. It's a really simple and very subtle little blended eye. And then I thought I'd just show you a little bit of something with a kneadable eraser whilst I'm at it. So I just wanted to show you, I'm going to lay a ground again like I did in the first part of this tutorial. I'm going to take my 5B, um, I'm going to take my 5B for this one if I can find it. There we go, my 5B because it's a little bit softer. I'm going to grab my scissors again and I'm just going to shave off or lay this ground here. So shaving off just some little filaments or some little sort of shards of graphite onto the page. Blend that off. And I just wanted to show you sort of the working in reverse, I suppose, and how you can really make use of the erasers here. So I blended that in so that there's no sort of powder sitting on the surface. Try and blend it into the paper rather than blowing it all away again. Seems like a bit of a waste, but you may have some leftovers there. And then I've got just this kneadable eraser. I didn't want to pop the other one out of the plastic. It seemed like a waste, so this is one of mine. And I'm just going to squish it down a bit. And then I've got a little leaf here. And I'm going to work from the outside in. So I'm looking at the negative space in that leaf to sort of find the shape of the leaf. And it just comes away so nice and easily, this ground. It's really, really satisfying. And it gets quite subtle at the bottom, so I might need to switch erasers at some point. I think I'm gonna be all right. And that's it, so just removing the negative space from around the edge, of course we can reshape that, to sort of find those leafy shapes. And I'll just do the same on the other side. So this is like working in reverse. It might slightly blow your mind if you're not used to working in this way with pe pencil, but it's, sort of tricks the mind into, into finding the proportion of something that you're drawing or studying. So that leaf's a bit curved off, so I'll just leave that edge. And then I'm sort of coming in here just to find those last little shapes at the bottom of my leaf before it sort of descends or moves in on itself. That's roughly it. And then what I can do is I can always kind of come back and reshape 
some of those areas where I've lost the shape in that process. But it's really satisfying if you're someone who sort of struggles with drawing and proportion, and especially with working with tone. If you put the ground down first, then all this tone is sort of there, and instead of sort of having to darken the whole page, you're just lifting out the highlights, which is just so different. Uh, it's a different way of working, and some of you may find that your brain, your mind responds a lot better to that way of working than it does to sort of drawing a harsh outline and trying to fill it in. So there we go, I've sort of reshaped my leaf a little bit now. Um, so he looks a bit more like an oak leaf, which is what he was intended to. And where I've got those pencil marks again, use your blender to sort of soften those off. And you can accentuate then the tone in certain areas if you want to at that stage. But I'm just trying to find the overall shape here for you nice and quickly. So just blending off those areas where I've reshaped the leaf, having taken away the sort of negative space around the leaf rather than trying to find the form by sketching an outline. Oh, I always forget that when I blow, my leaf will jump. Uh, so you can then, with your kneadable eraser, if you've got areas which are a bit lighter, you can pop in and you can lighten them up. So you just sort of twist and lift and they will lighten, which is quite satisfying. Or if you want to add texture to your leaf, if you sort of press and lift, you can create more abstract textures. And then I just wanted to show you how to capture that line running down the middle. And we're going to do that by removing, first of all, some light from the center of my page. I'm just going to brush that off so I don't blow, because otherwise I'll lose my leaf again. So you'll end up with quite a wide light mark to begin with. I'll put in a couple of the strands coming out from either side. Just for demonstration purposes, this is not a scientifically accurate study. It's just to demonstrate the technique. And then what you want to do is once you've lifted out those areas, you're then going to go in and intensify the area around those highlights. And this is where the magic starts to happen. You can reshape those highlights to make them smaller by coming in at the edge on either side with your pencil. So you create really, really subtle little highlights for the veins of the leaf. And then obviously we can blend all this off towards the darker areas. But can you see now how when I'm just sort of working my way down and I am darkening around the edge of that highlight, I'm not only reshaping it, I'm also making that little highlight pop. So this is why we talk about a push and pull when it comes to tonal studies. So. I'm nearly there now, just sort of finding these little highlights of these leaves. And then afterwards, you can go in and you can blend again. So in being mindful of keeping this tutorial nice and short and sweet and snappy, you've got a couple of things that you can play around with there. I am just blending off now those darker areas towards the lighter areas of my leaf. And in so doing, that little vein down the middle is just popping. So it's not magic, it is technique. Um, and if you haven't been taught it before or at school, like many of us were not, um, then this is your chance to sort of learn it now and adopt it into the vocabulary of uh, different ways of working with pencil. So enjoy those little techniques, have fun with them, and I hope this has given you a sort of fairly comprehensive introduction to working with this little starter pack and if you'd like to learn more with me have a look at surreyartschool.com where we have a range of online courses and classes suitable for all abilities and infused with mindfulness. Thank you so much.